was Ruvik. It was him. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Eon here and welcome to part 2 of the Evil Within trailer analysis. I've been reading through the comments of the original analysis and a lot of you guys pointed out certain things that I didn't notice. Your contributions are very much appreciated so I just want to say thanks. Using your contributions and after doing a bit more research I have decided to make this video to make some corrections. It goes without saying you should watch the original analysis video if you haven't done so yet. Anyways, without further ado. Let's dive right into it. First, I want to talk about the dialogue that I initially thought was spoken by Sebastian. It was Ruvik. It was him. Since this particular dialogue was spoken right after Sebastian glanced at this unknown specter, I was led to believe that maybe Sebastian recognizes the specter he saw through the security camera, saying, it was him, I know that guy. But YouTube user Kazuma Shimano pointed out that the dialogue was actually spoken by an injured doctor from the prologue portion of the game. Some of you also pointed out that there was a leaked video of the prologue that I could find around the web. Most sources have removed the video after copyright claims from Bethesda, but I have managed to find it. After checking it out, I can confirm that Kazuma Shimano is 100% right. In fact, here is the full audio from the leaked footage. I can't really make out the first portion of the dialogue in which a name is spoken, but if I had to take a swing, I would guess that the doctor is saying, it was Rubik, it was him. It couldn't be, I can't believe it. It's pretty clear now that it's not Sebastian who recognizes the perpetrator of the mental hospital, but rather this doctor. Unfortunately, soon after the dialogue is spoken, the doctor passes away, taking with him important clues about the mystery behind the mental hospital's mass murder. Speaking of the mental hospital, the leaked footage showed that the facility is called Beacon Mental Hospital. Above the name, you can also see the facility's logo, although there is the possibility that Beacon is a company of sorts similar to Umbrella, so perhaps the logo doesn't just symbolize the mental hospital, but rather a corporation known as Beacon. It's all pure speculation at this point. Next, I want to skip to a scene featuring what I initially thought to be tropical trees. Many of you pointed out that these are actually blades, meaning this room is likely some kind of a trap room within Beacon Mental Hospital. At first sight, this also looks like it could be some kind of an exterior setting, but the hardwood floor, similar to what we see here, shows that this is clearly some kind of interior setting. We'll have to wait until a high quality version of this footage is released in order to analyze the finer details. But for now, just keep in mind that you're looking at what essentially are giant and deadly windmill sticks. Finally, I want to talk about this scene. I initially suspected that perhaps this interior setting is not from Beacon Mental Hospital because the shot just gave off a different vibe. I also wondered what these contraptions were sitting on the side. Many of you pointed out that those could be chainsaws, and I completely agree. And as most of you know, chainsaws are the butcher's main weapon, meaning that this interior location is in fact somewhere within Beacon, somewhere close to where the butcher resides. Further proving this point is this small portion of a rusted wall here. The textures are very similar to what we have seen in the butcher's lair. Not to mention all this meat hanging from the ceiling. And here's the nail in the coffin. I actually managed to find the exact footage of this location. The following footage is a glimpse of the Evil Within's gameplay released by Bethesda at E3. Check it out. If you move through here and die, it's not going to play out exactly the same way each time in terms of how the characters move. Again, you'll notice sort of the UI stuff comes up and then goes away. Again, wanting to, to create a really immersive experience. Now I've got the key, I'm gonna go move to unlock this door. But everything from the pace at which Sebastian moves through the world, you notice even how he opens doors and kind of how that feels to the player that it opens slowly and you're almost craning your neck to look around and, and see what's on the other side of the door as, as he's opening it. I mean, I can already feel that tension of trying not to make a noise, yeah. not trying to And, and it's one attention. of those things like, you know, you. You don't really know, like, what's the point at which I can move through here quickly and not have to worry about it versus, you know, really having to move slowly so that I'm not making too much noise, attracting the attention of enemies. 
As you guys can see, the location shown in E3's demo matches the Tokyo Game Show footage perfectly. The only difference is that on the more recent version of the game, there's a piece of cloth on the right side. You will also notice that beyond that door lies this particular hallway, which we get glimpses of in this trailer. In intention of enemies, doors you open slowly, but you can also kick them open. But if you kick open the wrong door and create noise when there's enemies around, then you're in trouble. Here, Sebastian has walked through and didn't notice the trap that was there. Now he's triggered the trap. Now you got a big chainsaw guy uh, chasing after you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I missed anything else, but if I did, be sure to let our nation know in the comments below. And to be further updated on the evil within, be sure to join the nation and subscribe to Young Gear. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much, and Young out.